Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here. Uh, today is Friday the 17th of May 2024. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're going to get started and take a look at what's going on. We're going to do a little bit of fact checking here. We're looking at Zero Hedge. And uh, it says Ukraine formally asks NATO to send troops for the first time. And the Pentagon is mulling. So I just wanted to see what's going on with all this. Uh, so I clicked on it and uh, uh, NATO readies troops for Ukraine support, uh, activating for the first time ever its response force. Uh, let's see, this article comes from... Uh, oh, hold on, Market Watch, I guess. Uh, just a sec. Let me turn this advertisement off. Support activating for the first time ever, and it's a NATO readies its troops for Ukraine. Uh, Germany okays weapons for Ukraine, the major shift of military aid. Uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, for the first time in history, has activated its NATO's response force, the NRF as it reacts to Russian invasion in Ukraine. The coalition announced late Friday that President Biden has stressed so far, however, that U.S. troops will not go to Ukraine directly, as it is a member of the NATO alliance, uh, but can help stage support nearby. NATO allies are also wary of Russians, Russia's nuclear arsenal. So, reading very carefully in here, it says President Biden has stressed so far uh, that U.S. troops will not go to Ukraine directly. Okay? So, it's one of those things right now where... Uh, let's read this article. Let's take a look at these articles here. Uh, to help get a little bit better picture of what's actually going on. Uh, it says the New York Times says that NATO member states are considering sending military instructors to Ukraine. So, where it stands right now, uh, they're considering sending military instructors to Ukraine. It says some NATO member states are discussing the possibility of sending military instructors or contractors to Ukraine to train, I guess, Ukrainian troops. Uh, now, the Ukrainian Minister of Foreign Affairs on sending NATO troops to Ukraine, he says the day may come. So, as far as the sending of troops to Ukraine, I don't think they're quite there yet to that response yet. Uh, but it's it seems to be kind of moving in that direction. So this article here says Ukrainian formally asked NATO to send troops to Ukraine for the first time and the Pentagon mulling. I, I would put that as a good way of putting it. Mulling is what they're doing. They're mulling. Mulling it over is what they're doing right now at this point. Now, moving it on, moving on, uh, I found this article. Let me see if I can hit play and see what happens here. It's Chamba Casino loves to send these out. I wonder who's going to get this one. How do I it skip these real. ads? Join the Chumba Casino goodness. and claim your free welcome bonus. I want to skip You'll be the ad. from ear to ear. And so I'm clicking on for? skip it. Oh, my God. Stop. <laughs> okay, here we are. See, he comes up. And he... There. How do I stop this? There we go. Okay. <laughs> I disagree with this. It says rare footage shows deep sea squid attacking camera. I disagree with it. I don't think he was attacking it. Uh, I'm not sure how good their eyesight. If they're in a deep sea... Probably they don't rely upon their eyes as much as... Uh, he does have eyes. I can see his eyes. But 
do they rely upon their, question mark do they rely upon their eyes as much as as their sense of feel now these tentacles coming off in the front here on this deep sea squid obviously these tentacles he, he probably uses them to feel everything feel his way around his environment a lot and and, and uh, taste and and they rely upon their other senses more so i would say that what he was doing was he was exploring he was just coming up and touching that thing to find out what it was i don't think he was attacking that's an assumption that they're saying that squig was attacking the camera he just come up and he feel it a little bit he didn't damage the camera did he don't think so says he wrapped his arms around the camera uh at a depth of about one kilometer can you imagine the pressure this creature is able to live down underneath the ocean at one kilometer deep over a half a mile deep can you imagine the pressure down there uh i think i think creatures like that if they bring them up to the surface they it, it hurts them it damages them just like it would damage us to go down to that depth we can't go down to that depth and they can't come up here to our depth it damages their body now in texas today there was a storm look at this car here <laughs> it's all just covered with bricks it must have fell off of a building. It must have been parked near a building or something, and the bricks fell on it. That's the only way I can see, because typically, even in a tornado or something like that, if a tornado picks up bricks and stuff, it drops them rather quickly because of their weight. They're heavy. It takes a lot of wind to pick up a brick, and you don't carry it very high into the sky before it falls. You know, and even if a tornado is picking up a brick from a house, that's part of the debris that doesn't fly very far. It just falls out. And so for that car to have that many bricks on top of it probably must have been parked near a building and the bricks fell off of a building on top of it and not from the tornado itself. Not that the tornado can't hurl bricks. They can. But objects that are lighter like styrofoam and insulation and, and pieces of of tin and stuff like that the tornado can pick them up and hurl them for a considerable distance and carry them aloft for a long ways because they're lighter lighter objects you know so oftentimes when people see the debris flying around the tornado oftentimes that's lighter objects and not so much the heavy stuff the heavy stuff might fly but it generally stays near the base of the tornado and doesn't go that far things like a truck it might pick it up and throw it three or three or four hundred feet but it drops quickly out of the tornado how did i get talking about this <laughs> Anyway, so the, in Texas right now, uh, a Texas thunderstorm killed four and leave 900,000 people without power. People were killed mostly, I guess, by falling trees. And there was a toppled crane. And the Houston mayor warns people to stay home today. Everybody to stay home in Houston. This is bad extreme storm in texas it sounds like look at the picture of these felled uh, fallen power lines these big these are the big lines you know the big they carry the power into cities and stuff no wonder the power is out knock down those big transmission lines must have been awful strong winds to do that now what we're looking at here is probably a combination storm it's probably i'm thinking to myself half derecho type storm and maybe half tornado type storm maybe a a derecho type storm that was carrying tornadoes in it uh possibly very very bad now we're going to move on to the financial markets now and what we're looking at is is we got a dollar 20 day in silver guys it's one of the biggest days i've seen to the upside that's almost halfway to our three dollar days a dollar twenty in one day is almost halfway to our three dollar days that are coming in the future and you guys right now you're probably seeing that price over thirty dollars you're like me wow look at that silver's getting up there it's going it's even went up a penny just since i've been talking right now 
It's up over 4% today. Uh, I was, anyway, listen, I was listening to George Gammon on the Canadian Prepper Channel. Uh, and he did a show and he was talking about uh, uh, gold and silver in the crisis. And he went and he visited, visited, visited the South American countries or whatever, you know, and he was talking about that too, you know, and, and, and talking about how his experience in trying to sell silver, gold, and Bitcoin in these places and the things that he noticed and uh, some of the assumptions he made, you know, about these things. It's up four cents just tonight since I've been talking. A anyway, <laughs> I got sidetracked a little bit. I was talking about George Gammon. So he, he, he was saying that uh, that it's hard to transact sometimes in these things like gold and silver and because they're not the currency of exchange of a particular country. So it doesn't matter what country you're in, like here in Canada. They use Canadian dollars at the stores. They don't use gold and silver. It doesn't really matter what country you're in. Uh, they're not. It's not used in the United States really either for a means of exchange. You go to Walmart and you haul out a, haul out a silver coin and say, "Okay, I want to pay for it with this." They're going to be like, "Uh, haven't you got a credit card or haven't you got some cash?" They don't take it, right? So, is there a time in the future when they will take it? Question mark. Well, I'm going to tell you guys what. He is right about this much. George Gammon, I was listening to him. He is right that when the crisis comes, the, the hyperinflationary crisis, they are still going to use the dollar as their, means, as their primary means of exchange for, for buying and purchasing things. That will continue no matter how bad the inflation gets. I mean, you might get inflation of... Like he was quoting an example of 20% per month. Yes, it can get that bad here where you're losing 20% of your dollars purchasing power every month. It can get worse than that. It can get a lot worse than that. But they'll still continue to use the fiat currency as a means of exchange. And as they shut the door out there, it's going to get difficult. It is going to get difficult to... Uh, transfer that silver, gold, Bitcoin, whatever you got, it's going to get more and more difficult to... It's going to take a complete destruction of the fiat currencies before it's going to really shine your precious metals. And at the point when it really starts to shine is when it gets worse than 20%. Per month, when the inflation rate starts to get up so high that people get desperate, so high that that it's getting near the end game of this thing. That's when your gold and silver really start to go. When you start to get like Zimbabwe, or like the inflation we've seen in Weimar Germany, in the final stage, when people just can't, the currency ceases to function properly. When in the morning. By afternoon, that afternoon, it's lost 50% of its value ahead in the morning. When it gets that bad, and it will. It's just a, it's a progressive sort of thing, guys. Hyperinflation. Uh, it starts with inflation, and then it goes through an acceleration phase. And it, In the acceleration phase, you, you see the currency losing 20% monthly or whatever. That's still need the acceleration phase. When it gets into the, the real hyperinflation, it's a progressive thing. It just gets worse and worse and worse. There's no end to how bad it can get as long as it provided that the government continues to stick with that particular currency that's hyperinflating. It'll go faster and faster and faster. And it, I mean, what's the record? I mean, it, it could be losing its purchasing power 100% of its purchasing power every hour practically I mean until they put a stop to it until they say okay that's it uh, 
one dollar is now only worth the same as you need a trillion dollars to produce buy what you used to buy with one dollar when it gets that bad you know then it's uh, they finally say hey you know what this is it it's over for that currency and they have to do something some sort of a reset or coming in with a it's just one of those things, guys. You know, it's a progressive thing, and we're moving in that direction. It's going to progress until it gets to that end game. This is really not all that hard to figure out, but that's where it's going. Gold's up $36 today. Uh, $36.40 today, or 1.53%. It's at $24.11 today. Taking a look at cryptocurrency. You know, we talked about all this, guys before you know months and months and months ago we talked about when gold and silver was i was saying when gold goes to 2400 you know i remember that was a, on one of my shows i'm pretty sure i remember that was one of my marking points was when gold goes to 2400 i was saying and that's back when gold was like 1200 bucks in other words double some price well it's doubled in price now you know and uh, silver's over $30. It's happening. What I'm trying to tell you guys is the stuff I talked about in my shows is happening. And what did I actually say when it does that? I said, that's, I said, that's just really getting it going. It's just starting to take off. You know, Bitcoin's at 66,006. What's this thing with Bitcoin with 666? <laughs> there it is again. Six, 66,658. 76. So it's a 666 again. Ethereum 3086. And uh, XRP is at 52.2 cents. Well, at least XRP is 52 cents and not 50 cents. It's always 50 cents. Dow Jones Industrial Average is at 28 points above. Uh, it's went up 28 points today. And it's at 39,998. Oh my gosh, it's almost 40,000. So close. Now, taking a look at our crude oil today, it's uh, 79.34. And uh, crude oil's up 11 cents today. Crude oil's been staying stable at that price around 80 bucks for quite a little while now. It's, it's liking that price. Taking a look now at the bonds, we're looking at rising yields on the long end of 4.40 on the 10-year, and it's risen 2.5 basis points, and 4.54 on the U.S. 30-year, it's risen 2.4 basis points. And our dollar index is at 104.43 and dropping. Now listen, guys, it might be a few more days before I get the uh, uh, channel membership thing set up. I'm working on getting it set up over the weekend, you know. And uh, I'm trying to get the prices adjusted and stuff, so I'm going to try to get it affordable enough so it's about the price of a cup of coffee. It buys you a whole month, you know, of uh, shows and... Uh, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to try to do my first show this weekend. And uh, I got my camera charging, you know. Uh, of course, see, this, this camera right here runs off the power of the computer. So I don't have to charge this one up, you know. But I got my camera charging, the one I'm going to use. And uh, camcorder charging. Anyway, listen, guys, thank you for... Uh, watching my show you i appreciate my audience out there and you guys have a great afternoon and uh bye bye <laughs>